I'm Tony Sycamore, Senior Market Analyst at IG Australia. In a holiday-shortened week, US equity markets locked in a fourth week of gains. Wall Street's measure of fear, the volatility index closed at 12.45%, its lowest level since January 2020. Now, after coming a long way very quickly, a modest pullback in US equity indices would not at all surprise. And timing-wise, the end of this month into early December is a possible window for a pullback to rebuild energy and to set up for the end-of-year finale. In terms of the catalyst for a pullback, it could be month-end rebalancing flows, or it could be the release of the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the core PCE, which is due out Friday morning, Australian Eastern Daylight Time which may influence the expected timing of the Fed's first adjustment cut. So right now, we're looking for 100 basis points of rate cuts during 2024, with the first rate cut coming by the middle of the year. Let's take a look at the chart of the S&P 500 to see where that starts the week and what is likely to come ahead. Okay, so we've looked at great detail at the rally from the 3502 October low up to the 4634.5 July high and the subsequent pullback. And as you can see here, this rally has, as I mentioned, come very uh, a good deal of distance in a very short time. In fact, it's up over 11% in about 18 trading sessions. Now, at this point of time, we would not be advocating opening fresh longs. In fact, what we're suggesting to do is to look for better levels to buy. And in terms of where that support is likely to come in for the market, well, if it was to fall back below this 45.66 low, which isn't that far away, I think there's likely to be buyers emerge ahead of this 44.30 high. So somewhere between 44.50 to 44.30 is where I would see as being the likely buy zone for the S&P 500. Now, for whatever reason, if the S&P 500 was to take a deeper turn lower and it was to break below the 200-day moving average coming in around 4,300, then you would have to consider the fact that we have put in place uh, a medium-term high and that likely a deeper pullback is underway. So keep that in mind in terms of where we would then abandon our bullish bias, well, certainly below this 200-day moving average. For the NASDAQ, well, the NASDAQ rally has been a little bit more spectacular as we spoke about, uh, pushing up to this 16,062 high before this corrective sideways price action, which picked up the trend channel support and the 200-day moving average before a rally of around 14% from the October lows. Again, we would not be advocating opening fresh longs at these elevated levels. In many respects, we feel like the easy money has gone. This rally was in line with our expectations in terms of pushing above this 16,062 July high. So where would we be looking to buy the pullback? Well, there's a really nice band of support coming in from this 15,700 high and this 15,468 high. So in this area here, I think is likely to see buyers emerge. Now, in terms of where we would consider a pullback as creating some issues in terms of a final push higher, I would not want to see the NASDAQ for much below 15,450, because below here, you would start to think, look, maybe there is a chance of a deeper pullback towards this 200-day moving average. And that 200-day moving average doesn't come into around 14,400. So it is a good deal away, and you probably don't want to be giving back all of these profits uh, just to see it come all the way back here. So what I'm looking for, the base case, is into the coming weeks, into the end of the year, potentially a little pullback into month end, uh, early December, as we mentioned, looks like a pretty good time window. That would work off these overbought readings, and that would allow the market to rebuild in a, rebuild energy rather uh, before a push up towards 16,400, 16,500 into year end. Thank you for listening and have a good week ahead. 